Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Coming at you today with video number three. And this is gonna be a fun little one because as promised, I'm gonna be showing you some of the bloopers from my videos. So if you follow along on Instagram, you might remember me doing a poll asking if you wanted to see sort of some of the behind the scenes, outtakes from my videos, and the overwhelming response was yes. So that is coming your way today, uh, but I do have a purpose as to why I'm sharing these bloopers. So I'm gonna play them for you here in just a second, but make sure you stick around to see what that is. I think that part of the uh, 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 why is that sounding so weird? Even within, wow, wow. Okay, okay. You just do a bunch of takes and then you cut together what's good. Does that make sense? What's my time at? I mean, we'll just do it again if it runs out. Just um, it's still on. I knew what I was gonna say. <laughs> I get so. I know. Good. This can all be snipped together. It. I, I filmed that part already. I don't need to say it. I'll probably do that part again. Let's see other stuff. So oh, what else? I had stuff in my head. Oh, I got that. Yeah, I remember, I remember what I was gonna say. Video number three. Pick number three, my lord. Number two, my lord. Which one was it? Eh, whatever. My teeth good? Yeah. Is that pretty good? Good? <laughs> no. She'll say, sure, I... Uh, sure. Bada boom, bada bang. <laughs> That's weird, huh? <laughs> Yeah. All right, so hopefully that gave you a good little laugh, but other than to poke a little bit of fun at myself, why do I share those videos? The reason I share those videos is to make a point that nobody is perfect at something when they first start out at it, but perfection isn't the point. I first started my YouTube channel earlier this year, and if you watched my first video, you know a little bit of the backstory behind that. If not, I will link it below if you wanna check that out. But essentially, the idea had been on my mind for a couple months, and it just looked like something that was a lot of fun, it could complement my blog well, but at the same time, it terrified me. And so I kinda of went back and forth for a while, but ultimately, I really felt that this was something that God was putting on my heart and asking me to step into, and I wanted to be obedient to that. So I published my first video at the beginning beginning of January, but what you don't see in the video is that I actually tried recording that video two other times before getting the take that I went with. And that started back in December, but I kept running into issues because this was definitely a learning curve. First of all, it takes some getting used to to just sit down in your room, turn a camera on in front of you, hit record, and start talking to it. It's not the most natural feeling. I legitimately have probably 20 takes of me sitting there saying, hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel because it just sounded weird and I felt awkward and it didn't sound like it was coming out right. Hey guys, oh wow, see, I did this about 20 times in the last video. And then there was the technical side of things. So at this point I did get myself um, a cheap little tripod and light, which I'm looking at now. So if I look like I'm squinting, that's why. Do I look like I'm squinting? Cause the light is bright, I'm like, but um, initially when I did my first video, I literally just brought in a kitchen chair from the dining room. I put a stack of books on top of it, set my camera on top of that, and then I propped up a little compact makeup mirror behind the camera because I don't have a front facing camera where I can see the screen. And so the little mirror was there so I could make sure that I was like in frame and focus. I had entire takes where I was completely out of focus and didn't realize it until after I finished recording and went back and watched it. One of the takes that I was actually happy with how everything came out and the focus was good and the framing was on point. I went back and watched it later on my computer and saw that there was a chunk of lipstick on my tooth. So that was real cute. And even with the video that I did end up with, if you look closely, there's actually two different cuts in it. So towards the end, the lighting looks a little different, my hair looks a little different, and that's because I filmed that the day later because as I was finishing filming, it was getting really dark and I couldn't finish. And I almost didn't post that because I thought I want it to all look consistent and the same and that little change is gonna bother me. But then I just thought, you know what? If I wait till I get this perfect, then it's just never gonna happen because I could get everything right with the lighting next time and the framing and not have two different cuts, but then not say things the way I wanted to say it. And there's always gonna be something to find in it that's imperfect. And so I just realized, you know what? I can't let perfect be the enemy of done because yes, it's good to wanna do something with excellence, but at some point this quest for perfection is really just gonna become this thinly veiled excuse for procrastination and worse, for disobedience. So I posted the video, I launched the YouTube YouTube channel and even though it's only been a couple videos at this point it's been so cool for me to interact with some of you in the comments and to just see how God is 
was using this. And the thing is, I wouldn't have gotten to experience that if I waited for my video to be perfect because it never would have been. And so again, nobody is perfect at something when they first start out at it, or ever for that matter, but perfection isn't the point obedience is and the way that God wants to use you for his purposes is way too exciting and way too fulfilling for you to miss out on it. I think that oftentimes one of the biggest things that stops us when God has put something on our heart for us to step out into is comparison because we could get this idea to do something and we can be so excited about it and want to go for it but then we start to look at other people who are already doing the thing that we want to do and we start to think well I'm not going to be as good as that person or I'm not going to make as big of an impact as that person or people aren't going to like me as much as that person or maybe my technical skills aren't going to be as good as that person and the reality is they won't be but the thing is you can't compare where you're at on step one of your journey to where somebody else is at on mile 10 of their journey you can't compare yourself to somebody who's been honing their craft for years and years when you're just starting out in yours I think that sometimes we're afraid to be a beginner we like to do the things that we know we're good at that we feel confident in that other people know that we're good in and that's sort of our comfortable sweet place but then when we try something new and we're not good at it yet and we we have to be a beginner at it I think that that's an uncomfortable and a vulnerable place to be but the thing is unless we allow ourselves to be a beginner we're not gonna learn new things we're not gonna grow and unless we allow ourselves to be a beginner we're never gonna get to the point where we're thriving or excelling in our craft either unless we allow ourselves to take that first awkward step of the journey then we're never gonna be the person who's on mile 10 of the journey I had a friend of mine ask me recently how I know when a blog post is finished and I think he was kind of on to something and maybe kind of knew what I was gonna say but my answer to him was that I don't whenever I publish a blog I almost always feel like there was something I could have done better whether from a content standpoint uh, better writing or better photos or from an editing standpoint thinking I could have communicated something more clear I almost always feel like there was something I could have done better and the reality is in every case there probably was and that's even more clear when I look back at some of the earliest ones I ever wrote um, because I look at them and think wow that could have used some work but the thing is if I would have waited to start my blog until I was able to do so perfectly then I never would have started a blog yet starting imperfectly gave me the opportunity to progress and to grow with every single post I've written and so we can't be afraid to be a beginner because again if we aren't willing to be a beginner then we're never going to be intermediate or excelling or whatever any of the other steps are and if God is putting something on our hearts to do then we can't let perfection be the enemy of obedience at the end of the day if there's something that you're wanting to start something that's on your heart to do I don't know with certainty that that thing is God's will for you but here's what I do know if you're in Christ God's will for you is to know him and to tell others about him and more often than not those little desires Desires, those little things that bring you delight if you're in line with him those things are not a mistake those were given to you on purpose and they're connected to the ways that he wants you to live out that purpose of knowing him and making him known uniquely I think the other thing that sometimes stops us when God has asked us to step into something new is we feel like it's already being done I know I've gotten this message quite a few times through my blog of people who are maybe wanting to start blogs who feel like God has put it on their heart to just share the ways that he's working in their life but they feel like there's so many blogs and it's oversaturated and would my voice even make a difference but the Bible tells us in Matthew 9 that the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few and what that means is that the harvest meaning the people in the world who still need to know who God is is plentiful there's so many people who don't know who he is and the laborers the people who are working to make that happen are few and so I say it might feel like everybody is doing it but if God is asking you to do something then until we get a retraction written on that verse saying oh just kidding the harvest has gone away and we have too many laborers go home which by the way isn't gonna happen then there's never too many voices speaking his truth proclaiming the gospel speaking his love into the lives of other people your voice is needed I think it's so interesting that the gospel story the story of Jesus's life and ministry is recorded in the Bible four different times it's like isn't that a little redundant didn't we only need to hear the story once the thing is each of the four different gospel writers are looking to highlight a different aspect of what Jesus came here to do and of who he is um, I talked about in my other video how one of the things Mark was trying to highlight was the servanthood of Jesus I was just reading this morning how Luke one of the things he's trying to do is to provide a factual concrete account and so even though they're all telling the same story each of their voices was needed because they were each highlighting a different element of Jesus's character and the same is true for you 
and I. Even if other people are doing what you want to do, even if they're saying the exact same thing you want to say, they cannot say it with your voice. You were created uniquely and the way that you have uniquely encountered Jesus highlights his character in a way that the world needs to know. Your voice is needed. So all that to say, if God is putting something on your heart to do, step into it, obey. Don't be afraid to be a beginner and remember that perfection isn't the point, obedience is. Because ultimately, we're not responsible for the outcome, for how things turn out, for how we're received, for how we do. We're responsible to obey God and he is gonna take care of the rest. Even if you totally mess it up, he can work through that too because it's ultimately not about us or our efforts, it's about him. We're simply called to be obedient. And I promise you, a life that is lived in obedience to God and in step with the purposes he has for you is the very best life you can live. That is what I have for you. I hope this fun little video is an encouragement to you. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also hit subscribe if you haven't yet and I will see you next time. Bye. Two hands or one?